Welcome to our series of learning modules that focuses on the value of research in patient care. Our objective is to educate clinical staff on the scientific method and how to apply it to everyday clinical practice. Here, in Module 9, we will explore how to prepare a manuscript for a professional journal. In this module, we will learn more about the structure of a manuscript, become aware of journal guidelines available to authors, and touch on some basics when it comes to authorship. The major sections of a manuscript will naturally mirror the sections found in a published journal article, as we covered in Module 1. As a recap, we'll go over the sections in the order they typically appear. The title should be rather short but specific and include beneath it the names and credentials of all involved in your study. The introduction will contain background information and the rationale for studying your clinical topic. This section also describes the purpose of your study and, if applicable, your hypothesis or prediction with regard to one or more outcome measures. Next is the Methods section, or the blueprint for conducting your study, which will describe in detail your subjects, procedures, outcome measures, and data analysis plan. This section is followed by your results, and then a discussion of your results, capped off by the complete list of references you cite in your manuscript. It's customary for journals to provide authors with guidelines for formatting their manuscripts. For example, journals will often have strict word limits for abstracts and your entire document, requirements related to the point size, font, and spacing of text, guidance on headings and subheadings within the body of the manuscript, as well as permissible file types for tables and graphs, and a required style for listing your references, such as that of the American Medical Association or the American Psychological Association. This is not an exhaustive list, but it does give you some idea about the guidelines of a typical journal. Now that we've provided some context for our discussion, let's create an illustrative manuscript using the first clinical question from Module 2. To expand on the theme of your introduction, namely that prior studies have shown a relationship between sodium intake and blood pressure and that exercise may play a significant role, you'll want to paint a more detailed historical portrait what the topic is, what is known about it, gaps in knowledge, and so on. You'll also need to spell out for the reader why the topic is important for clinical practice and how your study adds to what is already known. The end of the introduction section is typically where you'll state your study objectives and your hypothesis if applicable. For instance, the primary objective of this study was to determine whether a decrease in sodium intake and an increase in physical activity would promote lower daily and weekly blood pressure. Next, recall that the foundation of your methods section was the following. This observational perspective study followed two groups of patients in a cardiovascular unit for one year. One group took in a clinically standard allowance for sodium and directed their own exercise routine. Another group took in 20% less sodium than the clinical standard and increased their daily number of physical activities. Primary metrics were average daily, weekly, and monthly blood pressure. Secondary metrics were patients' physical stamina and range of motion. To expand on this, you'll want to more thoroughly describe your patient population. For example, associated hospital units, any pre-existing conditions, as well as inclusion and exclusion criteria. In addition, you'll include information on subject demographics such as age, sex, and ethnic background. This is where you'll also be more detailed in describing your study design, whether it is experimental, non-experimental, correlational, and so on. Be sure to carefully describe all materials for your study, including surveys, educational content, and training protocols, and list all study metrics. For instance, rates of some event or hospital length of stay. The Methods section is also the place to mention any statistical software you use to analyze your data, to describe all statistical tests, and if applicable to include a sample size calculation. It's typical to begin your results section with summary statistics, that is, you'll report values such as percentages, averages, and measures of variability. When applicable, this is then followed by inferential statistics, or analytic techniques, used to draw conclusions about your broader target population. In our example, recall that the core results from your tests revealed the following. 
ending mean systolic and diastolic BP readings were significantly lower for patients with decreased sodium and increased exercise. Ending mean stamina and range of motion for knee flexion were significantly greater for patients with decreased sodium and increased exercise. Mean systolic BP was significantly lower for patients with decreased sodium and increased exercise in months 6, 9, 10, 11, and 12. There were no other statistically significant differences between the two groups at any other time points. We've now reached the last main section of a manuscript. Here in the discussion section, you'll interpret your findings and provide the reader with a broader perspective. Recall that the gist of your conclusions was, we noted positive effects on altering diet and exercise in our study. Decreased sodium intake and increased exercise led to significant decreases in patient blood pressure, as well as improved stamina and limb flexion. This suggests that altered diet and exercise may minimize hypertension and enhance overall well-being. Of course, you'll want to significantly expand on this in your manuscript to perhaps explain what impact your results may have on near-term, mid-term, and or long-term clinical practice, and if applicable, to outline potential recommendations for practice or policy changes or future studies. This is also the place to discuss the limitations of your study, which among many possible factors are commonly related to sample size, missing data, and the length of time that subjects are observed. Before listing references, you'll insert any tables you've generated. For our clinical example, we'll insert this table with the following caption, Group Comparisons on Blood Pressure and Limb Flexion. A table such as this will concisely capture some of your key findings and will reduce the need for additional text in the results section. Here you'll also insert any graphs you've generated. Also to include captions, we'll insert this graph with the following caption, mean monthly systolic blood pressure over 12 months. Similar to a table, a graph such as this will highlight your major findings and decrease the amount of text in the results section. At the close of your manuscript, you'll insert your reference list. Remember to adhere to a journal's formatting requirements for references. References are often listed in the order they first appeared in the manuscript. Before we conclude this module, we'll offer a few tips for organizing your efforts as you work on your manuscript. Be sure to clarify from the start which authors will contribute which material. This will help you avoid misunderstandings and maximize efficiency. As you clarify each author's contribution, also identify options for your journal submission. Taking into account your clinical topic, its potential impact, and your intended readership. Before authors begin to craft their respective sections of the manuscript, it's advisable to establish time frames and any applicable deadlines for each author. This will help everyone involved stay on the same trajectory and will enhance overall workflow. In this regard, you may also want to use file sharing sources such as Box to further improve ease of communication among your collaborators. Now we'll ask you to reflect on what you've learned. What are some common manuscript guidelines that journals provide for authors? Common guidelines are word limits for the abstract, requirements for point size, font, and spacing of text, and instructions on which types of headings and subheadings to use. What are examples of items you'll want to thoroughly address in the methods section of your manuscript? Examples are subject demographics, inclusion and exclusion criteria, your study design, and the specific procedures and or interventions you used. True or false, clarifying author contributions from the start is not important, as the first author usually takes all credit. The answer is false. It's always important to determine which author will contribute which material to avoid misunderstandings and increase efficiency. This education series is made possible by a generous gift from the Stanford University School of Nursing alumni in collaboration with Stanford Healthcare, Lucille Packard Children's Hospital, and Stanford Medicine. Congratulations, you have completed Module 9.